Oh, hi. It's me, Tim Dodd, the Everyday Astronaut. And this? This is Falcon Heavy. Let's get started. Yes! Launch director on countdown one. SpaceX, fucking heavy. Go for launch. Falcon Heavy is configured for flight. E minus 15, stand by for terminal count. 10, 9, 8, Side booster ignition. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I can't even look at it, guys. It looks like the sun. Oh my gosh, it made it clear the pad by a lot. It is going. Oh my gosh, yes! Yes! <laughs> Falcon Heavy. That was Falcon amazing. Well, I survived the 21 hour drive to Florida and back. I set up three remote still cameras around the launch pad, ran five video cameras, and pulled off a potato quality live stream all on my own. I'm exhausted, and boy do I have some serious post launch depression. <laughs> but we have many questions to answer about Falcon Heavy. We learned so much after the successful launch, and there's a ton to cover. Instead of me trying to answer everything in this video, I decided we're gonna focus on one big question first. Why? <laughs> Why the Falcon Heavy? Why does it matter? Why launch it now when it'll soon be replaced by something bigger and better? And of course, the number one why. Why did SpaceX launch a Tesla into space? In some upcoming videos, we'll answer things like, what happened to the center core? What's the deal with fairing recovery? What's so cool about titanium grid fins? And why doesn't that Tesla melt in space? Each one of these topics will be their own super in-depth video. So put those patience pants on because I have a lot of work to do. And before we get started, if you need to have a review all about Falcon Heavy, why it's awesome and how it works, check out my video titled, Why It Took Five Years For The Falcon Heavy To Fly. That'll be a good place to start. So now we need to talk about why. You might have your friends or family ask this question. My personal answer tends to be a little philosophical at times, but I'll also be explaining the actual nuts and bolts of why. So let's start there. Falcon Heavy takes SpaceX's goal of making rockets reusable up another notch. Although the Falcon Heavy is three times more powerful than the Falcon 9, it only throws away the exact same amount of rocket, the upper stage. But due to the larger nature of Falcon Heavy, the percentage thrown away is much less. We talk about this often here on my show, but this really is the key to making spaceflight cheaper. SpaceX has already made waves by being able to recover and reuse about 65% of their Falcon 9. But now with the Falcon Heavy, they'll be able to reuse almost 90% of the rocket. And again, you might hear this over and over, but this is a huge step in getting space travel to be more like air travel. Imagine a world where jetliners had to be thrown away after each use. It's absurd, right? 
Now imagine a world where 35% of the jetliner had to be thrown away. That's better, but still absurd. Now with Falcon Heavy, we're biting at that 90% reusable mark, which is helping bring the cost down that much more. Put another way, due to the extra performance of the Falcon Heavy, it can put a satellite into orbit and recover 90% of the rocket, whereas that same satellite on a Falcon 9 would require the entire rocket to be thrown away. Of course, the real goal is truly making rockets 100% fully and rapidly reusable, and if all goes according to SpaceX's plans, they hope their upcoming rocket, the BFR, can achieve this. Falcon Heavy is just another step in the right direction for driving costs down and making rockets more reusable. It's also a massively capable rocket, which can secure important Department of Defense contracts and deliver large payloads for paying customers. So why bother with the Falcon Heavy when the fully reusable and even more powerful BFR is on its way? This is a valid question, and apparently even SpaceX tried to cancel the Falcon Heavy program three times. Falcon Heavy will probably end up being a placeholder to offer heavy lift capabilities for customers until SpaceX gets the BFR flying. BFR is slated to start flying in three or four years, so I think Falcon Heavy will fly for a good five years or so, but that's just my guess. So next, why did SpaceX put a Tesla in space? Why on Earth, or off Earth, did they waste their money to show off? Why not do something of scientific significance? Believe it or not, this one's actually pretty easy to answer. The first flight of the Falcon Heavy was a demo mission. It was purely a test of the vehicle to see if it would actually work. Being that it was a demo mission with only a 50-ish percent chance of success, it's not a very good idea to put anything of importance or value on top of the rocket. Elon Musk didn't even see it going this well. You can tell he was genuinely surprised by its success, especially hearing him explain his expectations in the post-launch press conference. You know, I had this uh, image of uh, just a giant explosion on the pad with, you know, a wheel bouncing down the road and uh, like the Tesla logo landing somewhere <laughs> with a thud. <laughs> with the inaugural flight of any rocket, companies tend to use a dummy payload or a mass simulator. This is usually just a hunk of steel, water, or concrete. Super exciting. Occasionally, you might hear the word boilerplate used, which is a more realistic simulator of a spacecraft specifically spacecraft that are exposed during ascent. Some examples are boilerplate units for Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Orion, and even SpaceX's Dragon capsule, which first flew on the first Falcon 9 mission. So I guess that really answers the question right there. Did you know that the first Falcon 9 mission just had a dummy Dragon capsule on top? No? Well, why is that? Oh, that's right, because it's kind of boring and you didn't care and neither did I. So to me, the Tesla was the perfect middle ground. It's not just some boring hunk of steel, it represents something. And since you shouldn't put anything of any real importance or value on top of a demo flight, this was a perfect compromise and an even better PR move. By doing something outlandish, audacious, and downright absurd, it got your attention. And not just your attention, but SpaceX managed to capture the world's attention. This is important. For the first time in years, millions of people tuned in to watch a rocket launch. SpaceX had 2.3 million people watching the Falcon Heavy launch live on YouTube. That's the second most people tuning into a single event live on YouTube ever, coming in after another space-ish related event, Felix Baumgartner's high altitude skydive. More important than grabbing your attention, it captured the world's imagination. Us humans relate well to things that we interact with often. We gravitate towards the familiar. So when we look at a spacecraft, as cool and awe-inspiring as it can be, it's not as relatable as, say, a car. It's too foreign, too rare, and too hard to grasp. So what happens in our minds when something we see every single day, a car, get hucked into space on top of the world's most powerful rocket with live feeds of our beautiful planet in the background? <laughs> When the live feeds of Starman started coming in, I had to just stop and pause for a moment. There it was, a Tesla in space, with a mannequin wearing SpaceX's awesome spacesuit just hanging out in the driver's seat, arm casually resting on the door and hand on the steering wheel. So why? Why did a billionaire shoot his car into space? We have so many problems down here on Earth, why waste it on space? And here's where we need to get a little philosophical. Space is the one thing that unites us humans together. It's the border we share. Once you get out into space, you realize there are no boundaries. There is no division. In all of our petty politics and wars, 
suddenly become hilariously irrelevant. Space exploration is us uniting as one species, exploring the next frontier together. It unites enemies like it did during the Cold War with the Apollo Soyuz mission. It sparks our imagination and quite literally opens up new worlds. So yes, maybe sending a car up into space is silly and seemingly frivolous, but in the grand scheme of things, it might be one of those moments we look back at in the history books. This may not have been a Wright Brothers flying the first airplane moment. This may not have been Chuck Yeager breaking the speed of sound moment. This definitely wasn't an Apollo 11 moment. But perhaps for the first time in the 21st century, kids were huddled around a screen watching a spaceflight event. For now, this may be my generation's version of huddling around a small black and white TV watching the Apollo 8 astronauts orbit the moon for the first time. On December 24th, 1968, while orbiting the moon, Bill Anders took a photograph of the Earth rising over the lunar horizon. This famous photograph called Earthrise is quite possibly one of the most iconic images in all of human history. And perhaps my favorite thing about this picture is that every human ever, dead or alive, is in this photograph besides just three, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders the crew on board Apollo 8. And although a mannequin in the driver's seat of a Tesla doesn't have the same significance as humans orbiting the moon, I can't help but think this image is quite possibly one of the most inspiring images of the 21st century. Or maybe I just think that because I totally called it. I think it should be a bunch of Teslas that are like made to just be <laughs> dummy payloads that end up going into orbit, that orbit either the, the Earth or the Moon, and we get all these live feeds of Teslas in space, and you can just go to teslainspace.com. <laughs> Make it happen. Okay, maybe not that teslainspace.com thing, but come on, I was close. So what do you think? What were your thoughts on the very first Falcon Heavy launch? Did you crap your pants when you saw the two boosters landing side by side? I totally didn't. Uh, what were your thoughts on seeing a Tesla in space? Uh, let me know that in the comments below. And remember, I'll be doing a lot more in-depth videos about Falcon Heavy, and other videos about Rocket Lab, NASA, and lots of other fun space videos. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a thing. I owe a special thanks to Das Valdez of Kerbal Academy on Twitch and YouTube for sending me his absolutely incredible video of the two boosters landing. You can hear him and fellow Twitch streamer EJSA going absolutely crazy, standing just four miles or six kilometers away from the twin booster landing. Be sure and check them out and find them online. I've got their links in the description below. I owe an even bigger thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping make this trip down to Florida possible. I owe an extra super special thanks to those patrons who are able to meet up and hang out in person. It was a ton of fun meeting you all, and I hope to do more meetups in the future. You guys are seriously awesome. If you want to help contribute, help script and research, hang out in our exclusive Discord channel, or offer ideas in our exclusive subreddit, please visit patreon.com slash everydayastronaut. Thank you. Don't forget to check out my web store for shirts, hats, mugs, prints of rocket launches, including Falcon Heavy, original artwork, and lots of other fun stuff at everydayastronaut.com shop. And as always, all the music in my videos is original. The song in this video is called Spaceships for Earth. Feel free to check it out and download it for free at soundcloud.com slash everydayastronaut. Tell a friend. Thanks everybody, that does it for me. I'm Tim Dot, the Everyday Astronaut, bringing space down to Earth for everyday people.